over two weeks after the final episode of the final season airs, I'm doing a q and I'm timely as ever. So my lovely patrons on Patreon had some great questions, comments, and theories, so this video I want to share them for episode 6 and season 8 in general. I'm going to start with Graham Lloyd who asks, Why do you think Drogon reacted to Danny's death the way he did? I choose to believe he understood the whole scene and hence that the throne and not Jon was the real cause of Danny's death. Also, did he go off to start a motel with his mother's corpse? So I said this in my review and I still believe that he was reacting in anger to the throne being the thing that caused his mom's death, her obsession with it, and also a if she can't have it, no one can have it. I think that's the general consensus at this point I've gotten from all of you guys talking to me about it, so that's what I strongly believe. As for where Drogon took her, Maybe the Red Priests and Priestesses, and they are going to resurrect her, and then we're going to have a severely decomposed Danny because by the time he gets there, she's not going to be looking pretty. George, A Song of Ice and Fire sequel, The Dragon Corpse Queen. Mr. Trick asked, how stunning was that shot of Danny with Drogon's wings spread? She looked like an angel of death. And that reveal of Drogon under the ash blanket. Do you have a favorite visual from this season? I love that shot of Danny. It was like the angel of vengeance. Um, I would say the visuals were my favorite from this season. They were, they were absolutely stunning. I, I see why they took so long to film the final season of Game of Thrones. For some reason, Danny touching the Iron Throne and looking out at the destroyed King's Landing and throne room and her hand just touching it. I loved it. I also loved the wildfire going off during her going bananas. Mr. Trick also asks, does a little part of you wish we got King Edmure purely for comedy value? Kind of a side tangent. If I was Edmure and I was treated that way by Sansa, I would have flipped a fucking lid. Being respectful and, you know, courtesy in general is very important to houses. And for one house to disrespect another one like that? Hell no. There would have been some issues with that and Edmure would have never forgotten it. I almost wanted Edmure to become king so then he could go, yeah, no, the North doesn't get their independence. Also, imagine how many women he'd bone in the first year as king. So, Edmure, they did you dirty. Finally, Mr. Trick wrote, what were your wins and fails for the season? And were you happy with it overall? Lastly, shout out to all your videos and chats during the season. Aw, Mr. Trick, you must have been flat out, so thank you. I'm proud to be one of your patrons. You've got a supporter for life here. Cheers. Mr. Trick, I hope you're really excited with where I'm going because I have so many videos coming out that are Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire related. I've been going crazy recording them. I know that wasn't your question. Sorry, I will go back to what you asked. Overall, I'm okay with season eight. I, I mean, people keep asking me, friends keep asking, so did you like it or did you dislike it? And I go, I don't know. I'm, I'm okay with it. I like certain parts. I disliked others. I said before the visuals were stunning. Um, scenery. The actors are wonderful. I mean, just top-notch actors. The dialogue was something to be desired. Um, we should have gotten a few more seasons to stretch it out. Even if we got the same storylines and, and plot, if it was stretched out more, it would have been a lot better. So, I would say visuals, the acting, gorgeous. Storyline, plot, pacing, it needed some work and there was some dialogue that just made no sense and they had to do it because they had to get to a certain point. Jeff asks, do you think that Arya Sailing West was just homage to a Lisa Farman story and that she'll get an entirely different ending in the book? I don't know if it was homage to her, although I'm really interested to see if she actually did go west and end up in Essos. My hope is that Arya has a harder time leaving the Faceless Men and she gets on the boat to head west of Westeros because she's trying to escape them. So I think it'll probably be the same. Jeff also asks, did Drogon take Danny's body to the nearest temple of Rylor for resurrection? 
Oh, yeah, okay, so I should have read this ahead of time, sorry. I answered your question in an earlier question that wasn't exactly about that, sorry. Yeah, I kind of hope so, because in Essos, the Red Priestesses were talking about how Danny is the one. So maybe they do res her and prop her up and then, you know, corpse dragon queen. That would be awesome. Roland asked, assuming Arya really does go west to Westeros in the books, do you think there's any chance George will write a book or books about her adventures? Also, thank you for your content during the past few years. Oh, you guys are making me blush. I look forward to it every week as I do your Star Wars content. <laughs> I even started reading the books because of you, Rar. I think George would want to write a book about Arya's adventures, just like he has a bunch of Dunkin' Egg stories he wants to get out, and he wants to do his Fire and Blood Volume 2, and... George has so many stories and I just don't think he's ever gonna get to them. So I think he would want to, a part of him would, but he just, he won't have time. Time is taken for you, George, I'm sorry. Death comes for us all. Andrew asked, hashtag ask, is the abbreviation of Detective Pikachu, <laughs> Dick Pika. You know. Pigling Pete said, the finale was perfect. All the viewers got a lot of what they wanted, but still ended up feeling a bit screwed. A Tyrion compromise. I don't know if I'd use the word perfect, Pigling Pete. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd use the word perfect. Pigling Pete also said, Bran the Broken sucks. Bran the Seer. Bran the Raven. Bran the Wolf. Almost any name is better than broken. Yeah, um, Tyrion's kind of a dick. Can we all take a vote on that and agree? Tyrion's kind of a dick. Saints fan added, Bran on the throne sucks. He is the same as Robert, etc. Not staying at the small council meeting, going back to his free to high. Oh, sorry, I mean, look for Drogon. Yeah, mister, I can't be lord of anything. Bitch, you're the lord of the six kingdoms. You liar. But yeah, I, I don't know about Bran. I think there's gonna be a civil war breaking out in a couple decades. So, good luck. Seth asked, have you ever considered remaking your Targaryen King series with the new Fire and Blood material? Yeah, I need to redo that series in general because it is terrible. It was my first videos I did, I think in my first year of this channel existing, and I just didn't know how to really do anything. I had a really bad mic. Um, I didn't really know how to edit and all, all that stuff, so it's just, it, it's, a, it's a nightmare. I, I should redo them just for that reason, but also, yeah, there's so much good Fire and Blood content, which I'm going to start going through as well. I'm like so jazzed up right now with all the Game of Thrones stuff I'm working on. Mark asks, just for fun, assuming no one's dead, how would the Great Houses do in the game show Family Feud? The Baratheon brothers would bicker all the time. The Starks don't seem worldly enough for trivia. The Tyrells and Martells would be carried by two members, Olena and Marjorie, and Oberyn and Doran, respectively. Not sure if Tywin and Tyrion could work well enough to do as well as the previous two. I actually think Tywin and Tyrion would crush it, so I think House Lannister would actually work out. I feel like the Starks got a lot of shade in the show about not being intellectuals, which was really sad, but... I think they would do decent. What do you have to do during winter? You're, you're stuck inside, might as well learn. But I think you're right. I think it would be the Tyrells, Martells. Um, I'd add in the Lannisters. I'd say the worst houses would probably be Greyjoys and Baratheons. They, they would not do well. 0.5 Joker asked, if you crown Bran, what would be your epithet for him? Bran the Great Manipulator or Bran the High? One of those two. 0 0.5 Joker also asks, Jacken, Sario, Dario, Bellario, or Kinvara. You have been granted the godly power to insert one of these into the final season. Who and why? I'd say Jacken fighting at Winterfell, mostly because it would make sense to me that the Faceless Men wouldn't like something perverting the many-faced god, the god of death's grand plan, if they view it that way. They might actually think, oh, well, this is the will of the many-faced god. I don't know. But I, I would most want to see how he responded to it and see him fighting with other faceless men in the battle at Winterfell. Gary asked, I just want to know where did all the Dothraki and Unsullied come from? I mean, when Danny had the big rally patting herself and everybody on the back, she had thousands of them. I thought they all got killed when they battled the Night King and his army. The only thing I can think of is maybe she left a bunch of people at Dragonstone because yeah, their respawn rate was 
insane. The answer though is probably plot reasons. Peter asked, so that symbol the Night King was leaving amounted to literally nothing. What do you think it was intended on being? Do you think D&D just kind of forgot half of the earlier season's plot hooks? So they said in a interview or a behind the scenes that it basically was the symbols of the children of the forest and the Night King and the others were taking it and perverting it. So it was a, a perversion of their sacred symbols. It was basically a middle finger to the children of the forest. But yeah, I also think that they forgot about half the things they set up. It's hard when that Star Wars money is just right under your nose. Andrew said, I found the ending too Disney for my taste. Hoping in the books for an epilogue from Drogon. Drogon flies with Daenerys' body to Essos of the womb of the world. Lands on the mother of mountains, incinerates her body, causing the mountain a dormant volcano to erupt. Lava flowing down on the Dothraki Sea like the Sea of Blood, igniting the grassland smoke, rising, filling the sky, causing a long night. Andrew, you are fucking dark. I love it. King Sabretooth said, The last time you saw Tormund at Winterfell, he was going to take the wildlings past the wall. Since it takes three months from Winterfell to King's Landing, the show telling me that Tormund waited at the wall with all the wildlings for over a year for Jon, how does he know he's coming? So Tormund just said that he was going to take the wildlings to Castle Black once the winter storms pass, so... He probably just got to Castle Black and then was chilling for a while when Jon showed up and he's like, hey, Get the fuck out of here. King Sabretooth also said, Sansa left her paralyzed brother in King's Landing after she had her queenhood, even though she said Stark men don't do well there. She seems kind of self-centered. Hashtag F you Sansa. Hashtag Sansa to the wall. Hashtag Sansa to the wall. Make it happen. Snake bitch. Speaking of Sansa, Peg Lake Pete said, Sansa's coronation gown with the werewood leaf detailing is stunning. Okay, her entire outfit, crown, hair was stunning, and I love the behind the scenes of them talking about how her dire wolf crown also had the tully scales, and then her sleeves were dire wolves, and then they had the tully scales too, and the dye was to match her friend Marjorie Tyrell's wedding dress dye, apparently. That's the costume people talking, so. They put a lot of thought into it, and her outfit, just everything, with Sansa, hot, 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 hot. Okay, actually, I'm back to King Sabretooth because he had a few comments and questions that I want to read off really quick. King Sabretooth said, Googled how long it takes to build a castle, and it says it takes 10 years. Why is everybody in the small council looking exactly the same 10 years later? Follow-up question. Why is everyone being so happy and cheerful following a scene with Danny being murdered? The tone shift was very jarring, in general. King Sabretooth said, Couldn't John, after being sent to the wall, just wait there a year and then go home? What is the Unsullied going to do? Check up on him? Yeah, I know. The Unsullied even left before he went off. John goes to the wall or just waits for them to leave, and then everyone's like, oh, okay, they're gone. Yeah, just go do whatever, John. We don't really give a shit. Although I feel like it's in the best interest of Sansa for him to be at the wall. It doesn't threaten her rule which is what she wanted. Snake bitch. Game of Thrones was a show where they show you A to Z why a character did stuff, but these final two seasons, they decided to take out a couple letters. Okay, that's actually a great description of this season. So no one talked about Jon being the heir to the throne, but no one talks about Gendry being the rightful king, and if you say he'll be a puppet to whoever his council would be, just remember Bran is also a puppet, at least with Gendry, you don't have to wheel his ass around. You know, after episode five, it was the first time ever I wanted Gendry for the throne. I had never thought Gendry for the throne, but yeah, I feel like he should have spoken up. But in his defense, he is a kid from Flea Bottom and Storms and in the Stormlands, ruling that is probably a lot for him already. Finally, King Sabretooth said, this is just a theory since Jon is undead. What if Danny is pregnant and a dragon can sense that the undead child is still alive in her belly? He took her away so the child can be born and who has similar powers as the Night King, resurrect the dead. That's really fucking dark, dude. And I love it. By the way, I will link King Sabretooth's Instagram in the video description down below. He does some kick-ass art. It's awesome. All right, let's go to Saints Fan, who had two comments. Love your videos. Thank you for all your hard work. Oh, you guys are still complimenting me. I'm staying around for sure. So, like, what was the whole point of R plus L equals J? Bran has to be kind of evil now, right? And to put all this into motion? I really don't feel Jon got a happy ending. When Tyrion told him he was like what there is still in Night's Watch, 
and when he reached the wall and the gate was opening, he let out a sigh. What good was it having Bran and Sansa on the throne since they could have pardoned him? I felt like everyone used him to do the dirty work and take the fall. Tyrion was just as guilty and gets to be the Hand? Sansa betrayed, committed treason, and gets to be the Queen in the North? No one else has any consequences but Jon who was sent to the Wall? He already has to live with he killed the person he loved. Even Tormund looks sad to see Jon. If Jon had chosen to go north himself, I would feel differently. Fuck Sansa, Bran, and Tyrion. Bran is not really king except in name, Tyrion is. Instead of drinking and whoring like Bobby B, he's getting to get high in the godswood of King's Landing. Looking for Drogon? Why? He spent two minutes with the small council. Just like the other bad kings of the past. Let's hope this time George is right and WoW is out in 2020. Yes, Jon is my favorite in the books, if you have not guessed. I actually think Bran is evil in the books. He's not evil in the show from what they showed, but I think he's controlled by Blood Raven in the books and Bran's happy ending as King of the Six Kingdoms is not as happy as we think it's going to be. As for Jon, I think he didn't get off too bad. I mean, he's beyond the wall exploring, being free, banging bitches. You go, John. You go. Saints fans other comment was, ugh, so according to the deleted scenes and alternate endings, Jorah was not going to die in the battle. He was going to be in the scene with Varys and Tyrion. Turn in Varys with Tyrion. Then see what Danny does at King's Landing and hear her speech and talk with John. also that he needed to stop her. Jorah is arrested also. He is sent to the wall with John. Gendry was going to side with Yara, Grey Worm, etc. about Jon killing Danny and needing to pay. I could see Yara not caring about King's Landing and Danny needlessly killing everyone, but Gendry also, just because she gave him Storm's End, he lived there. I'm sure he had friends. That is why Jon was sent to the Wall, and no even in this ending, not just the alternate one, he is not abandoning the Night's Watch and going to live with the Free Folk. He is just going ranging the far north. So everyone's screwed and used John, and he does not get a happy or bittersweet ending. He gets a I'm stuck at the wall ending, the place he hated and the place he was killed. More convinced now that Bran is the villain. Saints fan, I completely agree with you. And this, kids, is why you never stick your dick in crazy. It never works out. Now brace yourselves because we're going to our lovely, beautiful, perfect Dardell 2001. And as you know, Dardell has a lot of a lot of comments and a lot of feelings towards this show. Also, I'm glad you're safe from the tornado warning in your area. I need you to leave comments on my videos for the rest of my life. You can't die! So here are some Dardell 2001 comments. Will Sansa ever know the sweet Yara loving? Well, at the very least, Yara did get fucked by Sansa at the dragon pit, so that's something. I think the reason that Bran wanted Jon to know the truth is because he knew that Danny was going to go crazy, and may not have known why, and that Jon would have to kill her. If Jon didn't know, then he would have grown so close that he wouldn't have been able to. Oh, Bran was manipulating the situation for sure, and it's super messed up that Jon's parentage was basically just to drive a wedge between him and Danny and lead to Jon stabby stabbing her. I think Sansa told Tyrion about Jon because she saw how manipulating Danny was, making Gendry lord of the Stormlands, and thought that Danny used her body to make Jon fall for her. Remember, Sansa was around two of the best manipulators in Westeros. I know Sophie said something similar to that in interviews, so I think you're right, but also Sansa just desperately wanted independence for the North. She was gonna do what ever she had to do to have that happen. Will we ever see the Kraken that hurt Balerion and Valeria? Yes, I really do believe it was a Kraken that did it because that makes the most sense to me. If it had been a dragon, someone would have reported seeing a wild dragon in that area. Was the Kraken made larger due to the wild magics released with the fall of Valeria? Maybe, or it could have just been a very large and very mean one. There's a reason that the Kraken is the Greyjoy sigil, like dragons for Targaryens and direwolves for Starks. I could be wrong, but the voices say I'm not. Always listen to the voices. Always. Why did all the commanders who have been in battle before and were successful suddenly forget how to plan a battle? Plot reasons. And to make it look hella cool. In the show, how long after the people of Essos find out that Danny is dead do they go back to the practice of owning slaves? I'd imagine super fast. I think as soon as Dario figures it out, he's like, peace, bitches. And he just goes back with his company and does their thing. 
Will Sansa and Bran order all dead to be burned from now on so that Sam Jr. can't raise from the dead? I know what you're doing there, Dardell, but I would assume they'd be so paranoid about the others coming back that they'll always burn their dead. If you could go back to one point in either season five, six, seven, or eight to make one change, like telling Danny's war council that Jaime was going to Highgarden and Euron was going to ambush Yara, or to Winterfell Council to correct their battle plans, etc., where would you go? No cheating in going back to a spot in season five and telling them what will happen in other seasons. Just make one decision change, or tell Danny, put some damn armor and saddles on your dragons. I would just tell Danny, hey, Use your fucking scouts, you idiot. Okay, sorry. This Q&A was so late. Thug life? Thug life.